Oh, hello. Pip Hastings here. At DFW International Airport and Founders Plaza, a plane spotting mecca for everyone in DFW and throughout the country. And today, we'll be talking about dispatch. So join us and stay tuned here on Dispatchers Answering Your Questions. Pip here at DFW International Airport taking in the scenery and I know it's been seven months but we are proud to welcome back the one the only dispatcher Morgan Morgan thanks for making your biennial visit to us for the dispatcher show glad to be here Pip and I'm Really impressed with the literal dozens of subscribers you've added since I've been gone. Hopefully I'll be able to help you increase those numbers. So let's get to it right here on the Dispatcher Show and answer your questions. The first question comes from Christian Padilla and he says, How many places did you apply before getting an interview and how would you gain experience in the industry? Thanks for the videos. They are great, by the way. That's a great question, Chris. I was fortunate enough that um, I got hired at the first place I applied to, but um, never give up hope if, if you don't get in on your first attempt. I know most people typically don't, and I'd say a good access point in getting in uh, with any company is maybe trying the ramp or operations or something like that, even a gate agent. That way you can at least get your foot in the door with the company and then try and, and move your way into dispatch from there. Yeah, and I would add that uh, it's an excellent idea for me. It was actually, once I got my dispatcher certificate, I obviously wanted, I think we all want to work for the major airlines, right? And Absolutely. you know, because that's where the experience, the benefits, the money come in. Uh, but I was fortunate enough where I worked for a supplemental 121 carrier that helped give me some experience in learning how to flight follow and gain experience there. And like Morgan said, it's not always about jumping right in. Uh, Alex, uh, who we work with, he was a scheduler. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark was a ramp agent. I worked in operations. Fernando worked in operations. So the people we work with don't necessarily always start with dispatch. That's the goal, but they don't always do that. So thanks again, Christian, for that question. So Tony S. asked, I enjoy watching these videos in hopes of gaining more insight into the dispatch profession. I have a few questions about flight planning. How far in advance is a flight plan's departure? How far in advance of a flight's departure does a dispatcher begin to plan the flight? How long does it take to plan one flight? Is a dispatcher planning multiple flights at a time or one at a time? Thank you in advance for your answers to these questions. Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> Is that easy? That it's a, yeah, great that question. Answer, it's, that answers. So to answer your question, first off, we probably about two hours in advance because that's when we get kind of the passenger numbers as far as the weights, and we can kind of determine the fuel. Uh, sometimes we'll be a little bit advanced, but I would say as a general rule, we're two hours. And then on top of that, we are, in addition to planning multiple flights, at the same time, we're also trying to keep track of them as well. That's right. You're still flight following all the live flights while you're planning future flights. Um, but yeah, usually about two hours before the flight time and, and that'll still give you some time if the weather changes or something something happens that you can make amendments to the flight plan. Now, how many flights do you typically, would you say, you plan for a shift? That'll depend on which shift you're on, but, but typically our morning shifts do about 40 and then the afternoon shifts will do somewhere around 20 and then we have a mid shift that's somewhere in between 25-ish. Yeah, and uh, each shift is different. Now we work 10-hour shifts and the afternoon shift sounds like it has a lot less flights, but we also we also have to turn over. The morning shift has to turn over to the afternoon, which means we have to keep track as soon as we walk in, keep track of the flights that have already been planned for that turnover. So That's right, and, and typically uh, thunderstorms and things that build up will happen in the afternoons as, as the temperatures rise, and, and so they have a few less flights to plan, but they they don't have less work to do. Right. So thanks again, Tony. That was a great question. And if you are watching the video right now, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you like what you hear, we'll be making more videos. Morgan will be back in another seven months. So <laughs> we'll be making a video probably about in August. So, so sounds, it sounds good. Okay. Pip. All right. 
Matt Middleton has our next question. Matt says, thanks for the video. Would you give me your input on this? My main concern is it seems like you learn everything a private pilot, commercial pilot, meteorologist, ATC, and mechanic learns in just five weeks. I just don't see how that is possible. Also, don't you think $30,000 a year is a slap in the face considering you can make that checking packs in, a, in at a ticket counter? Am I overthinking it? I sincerely appreciate your input. Now that is a good question. So that's a tough question. So yeah, that is a tough question. But Morgan's going to answer it. <laughs> that's a great question, Matt. And, and yeah, we do learn um, a lot of what all of the other components in aviation learn. Like we need to know a little bit of what ATC knows and the pilots, but we don't know the, the full extent of what they know. And, and five weeks is quick, but you can also go to some other programs. Like I went to a TSTC's dispatch program, which was like a year and a half. So I got a little more in-depth uh, training and stuff rather than the uh, quick course of the five weeks. But um, as far as the pay goes, that's the that's the competitive rate for the regionals, and in you know it it does increase over time. But but everyone's goal is to eventually get over to the majors where you can actually make some more money. Yeah, I would I would compare it to like being in the minor leagues of baseball. Right. Uh, there's there's you know you obviously want to be called up to the majors. There's no question about it. But the competition is so fierce, and there's so many limited positions that they structure it in a way that it reflects that. Right. Now, there may be a time in the future where dispatchers are greatly in need, and the, the pay changes. So, be patient. I could tell you that I make a lot more money in the three years since when I first started. That's right. So, and Morgan does, I know. We actually started dispatching around the same time. He's right. got about six months more experience, but uh, as a general, so yeah, Matt, you're pretty accurate, but it, get, it gets better. Yeah, it gets it, it better. It definitely gets it, better. It gets better, for sure. Morgan's got the next, next question, question here. question comes from Austin. Really happy to have found this channel. Thanks for doing these videos. They're super informative. I've recently become interested in the profession after seven years in the music industry and, and being tired of the constant ups and downs. Question, what does your daily and weekly schedules look like between hours, jobs, days, work, etc.? Well, typically, most dispatcher jobs, at least in that I'm aware of in the uh, 121 world, which is the commercial regulation regulated business, uh, you will work a set shift you may be relief line and it's all based on seniority so right. the schedule is based on seniority so for us we will bid months at a time three or four months at a time for the schedule we want and so it really depends on seniority how long you've been there so there's a good chance when you start working you may work overnights or you may work the early morning shift because the older guys and women like to work the afternoon shifts right. and you'll probably have to work weekends uh, so it's just a matter of seniority. Yeah, and, it, and that varies based on the companies as well. Some bid for the whole year, some bid twice a year. We bid three times a year. So things things will change, but a lot of it's usually based on seniority. And and for us, we work ten hour shifts. I know some some work eights, and you know then they work more days a week or whatever. But but for us, in our experience, it's four days on, three days off, um, and that can also change if you pick up shifts or not but there are right. regulations to where you can't work every day um but it just depends on where you're working yeah and the one thing i would add is it's a 24 hour a day seven days a week 365 days a year operation just recently we experienced some pretty t terrible weather <laughs> here um but Snow. the show must go on and that's right and you're still required to come into work that's right so great question appreciate that austin Th the last question we have today is from vin and Vince says, I'm thinking of doing the Sheffield Dispatcher program. I have a few questions. What are some of the pros and cons of the job? How is the work-life balance? Do you think that, and do you think the demand for dispatchers have recovered for COVID? That, that, uh, I'll let you answer that last yeah, one that's first. A, that's a tough question. Uh, the pros and cons, obviously the pros uh, are flight benefits. And of course, if you're, if you make it to a major, the, the pay is also very nice. Um, cons. You work every day, like we discussed the yeah. the previous question, and and holidays, everything like that. But um, 
As far as the need for dispatchers with COVID, that's that's tough to say. I guess we're going to have to wait and see how the vaccines play out. And if, if everything starts going back to normal, the flight schedule's still still down. So the, the need probably hasn't risen yet, but it's looking better. Things are starting to slowly pick back up. And, and maybe by the end of the summer or something, after the vaccines have really gotten out, uh, things will be looking better and, and companies may be hiring again. It, it'll take time. Uh, there's no question about it. And so I guess that would say one of the cons right now, there's not a whole lot of upward movement because everybody who has a job is holding on to that job. So uh, keep that in mind. That's one thing to keep in mind. As far as the pros, obviously the flight benefits, huge bonus if you like to travel. Uh, you get to ride in the cockpit as part yeah. of a fam ride. As part of your FAA mandated training, you actually have to ride in the cockpit with the crew on a flight for five hours, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that is really cool. And it's nice to get to see um, out the front of the plane yeah. rather than the little tiny windows <laughs> yes, in the back. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that's definitely one of the bonus and cons we talked about. As far as COVID goes, I actually do know there are a few regional airlines who have started hi hiring uh, mm -hmm. for dispatchers. It's pretty tight right now. Now, but things are getting better like Morgan said so work-life balance we mentioned it earlier in the video but we work four or off three or some semblance of that and you can work extra shifts if you'd like to pick up extra money and hopefully over time we'll come back and you know pay us a little bit better to a little bit extra money but That's right yeah but Vin thanks so much for your question well Morgan this has been a great show today what do you what do you think yeah I'm glad I got to come and join you Pip so we should plan to do the next one in say what august we <laughs> august sounds good to me all right well this is dispatcher morgan if you have any questions for him or myself feel free to leave it on the comment section be below and don't forget to watch the videos that we have uh, that we've made so far so until next time we will see you in the skies thanks for watching guys <laughs>